defense against despair when we pray. Uh, God would actually shape our prayers away from just the things that we want and even teach us to pray something like, hallowed be thy name, which is not a, a vocabulary that we naturally gravitate towards and honestly not even a, a concept that we're usually super worried about until somebody does something wrong in church hallowed be thy name. When people misuse God's name, when people turn it into a weapon, especially against Christians, because really, if you really loved Jesus, you would you would be more accepting of everybody and everything that goes on around you all the time, um, regardless of whether or not that's healthy for the people that you actually love. Um, hallowed be thy name. When churches are full of hypocrites and uh, slanderers and those who do not uprightly walk within the Lord's ways, hallowed be thy name. You can look around and actually recognize that the that the name of Jesus is uh, more often than not used in vain than in, in good. And we are taught to pray, hallowed be thy name, as a reminder that there is actually nothing that you can do to make God's name holy. God's name is holy in itself. We just pray in this petition that it would be made holy among us also. And that is actually a gift because we know how this happens. It's, it's it starts not first in your actions or your heart or even in the world, only using uh, doctrine and, and Christianity and, and the teachings that, that, that the scriptures contain as a tool to, to advance your agenda, but, but simply in teaching God's word in its truth and purity. Because God's name is kept holy when the word of God is taught in its truth and purity, and we as the children of God also lead holy lives according to it. So help us to do this, dear Father in heaven. Let us start, if we actually care about who God is with his holy name, let us start with his holy word. And, and there you have a, a great gift in the word of God that teaches who Jesus is, that he loves sinners, that he bleeds and dies for you, that he redeems all by his death upon the cross for all, and he is risen from the dead. And this is the thing that Christianity is dependent upon, not everybody actually knowing the right thing. So we teach, we pray, we, we recognize that where God's name is taught in its truth and purity, that is only done where the Holy Spirit is at work. And so if you have a church that teaches the right word of God, you're actually in a really good place against the despair of how God's name would be used in the world. It's not supposed to be the loudest voice, just the truest voice. And that's an important distinction in this day and age where uh, for you pages and uh, algorithms and everything else would actually document every view that everybody has. And so we can recognize that ours might not actually be the majority voice anymore. That's okay. God simply says, teach the word in its truth and purity. Do your best to live according to it. And that also means not just upholding the law and, and fulfilling it yourself, but taking your sins to God like he commands you to do, that he would forgive them daily and richly. Uh, bring your sins to Jesus. Hear the word of God taught in its truth and purity. And don't worry about how loud the voice is. Just recognize that as long as it is true and being proclaimed, God's will is, is, is happening. Uh, God's name is being made holy among you. And, and that's, a, that's a comfort.